viewer, myself Dr. Sogoto Mahato, pediatric gastroenterologist and hepatologist. I work in a pediatric hospital at Ranchi in the state of Jharkhand. For last 3 to 4 years, I am following various YouTube channels like Gastro Liver Hospital, Kanpur, Ninja Nerd, Dr. Paul, Dr. Glaucom Plekin. So I also decided that I should give it a try. And I decided that I will put few of my videos from my endoscopy into YouTube. But the problem is my hospital is a small hospital and I don't have the tech support like the big hospitals from Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic or Cincinnati Children's Hospitals. Neither I have the technical expertise in animation. So I will put YouTube videos with simple voiceover from my endoscopy videos. So this child was a one year 10 month old boy who came from district Gumla in the state of Jharkhand which was a very rural and backward district. The presenting complaints were black colored stool for last one month. There was no hematemesis. Outside investigation showed hemoglobin had dropped up to 2.9 over last one month. This child received three PRPC transfusions and even at presentation the child was passing black colored stool. On examination, there was no splenomegaly, stomach wash was clear, so we decided to went ahead with endoscopy. We started endoscopy. When we entered into the esophagus, there was a big surprise for us, as we had initially thought of EHP view, but we, as you can see in the G junction, there was no esophageal varices rather there was only small erosion which was probably not the cause of the such prolonged bleeding for last one month then we entered into, into the stomach the body of the stomach was perfectly normal we looked at the antrum the antrum also did not show any ulcer or erosion we then looked into the fundal area, but even in the fundus, there was no varices. Then we entered into the duodenum. In the D1 area, there was no ulcer or erosions. So, most common causes were all negative. In the D2 area, we could see there was one worm, then there was two worms which were moving on the wall of the duodenum. And uh, we could appreciate few more on the other walls. So looking at the size, it looked at they are all hookums because under the endoscopy, they are all magnified views. And the round or what we commonly see is usually a white worm and that's large one. But these are by looking at the size probably they are around one centimeter only we entered deeper and when we entered into the d3 d4 area we could see the, the worms also present there so we decided let we will give it a try to count the numbers here we could see one then here another one then another one fourth fifth probably here yes it's the moving on then this is the sixth one then here probably two or three so around eight nine ten is already done then another one it's then another one here two or three more here another one Then uh, looking at the uh, papilla, we could see that behind the papilla, there are also one or two worms hiding there. Here we could appreciate one or two worms are there just below the major duodenal papilla like this one. Then here there was another one. On the left side, another one. All of these are live worms on the 
duodenal wall and here we can see probably a one large and warm on the right side and on the superior wall they, they are all smaller worms the the females are a little bit larger here on the right side we could appreciate they grow up to length of 1.5 centimeter and the male ones are usually up to point nine to one centimeter and we retrieved one worm with forceps but the worm got broken so we decided that we will try to at least retrieve one worm in toto and here we can see that on the right side it's a, probably a female worm because it's larger in size as compared to the other ones then we tried to catch hold of these worms but in the second attempt this worm was smarter and we could not retrieve this worm as you can see here we will be taking the second attempt to retrieve one worm all these are live worms this this time we had caught but it's got slipped then uh, after pulling it a little bit we managed to retrieve one whole worm in total and we will show that one here We had to use biopsy forceps instead of foreign body forceps because these are all smooth structures. Here we retrieved the whole worm and uh, examined it under the microscope. Under the microscope, it showed like this. This is the tail end. This is the uh, cloacal end, and this is the cloaca. On the basis of this cloaca, the microbiologists are able to. See whether this is Nicotra medicanus. So the learning points from the case is India is a tropical country where parasite infestations are quite common still. Who comes thrive well in environment in monsoon season? Simple CBC can give us clue to warm infestation sometime. Here absolute absolute count was nineteen hundred. Who comes enter into the body via the penetration into the skin of the feet? So playing on grasses on bare foot makes the rural children and toddlers susceptible for hook worm infestation. Suspicion is the key to diagnosis and treatment is simple with albendazole. Thank you. If you like my efforts, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel also. Thank you.